Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 9th of October, and as always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information. You can always do that by giving us a call at the Alaska Weather Information Line. 1-800-472-0391 is the easy way to get your forecast over the phone. Write that number down, keep it close, and as you get to the dialing prompts there, just write down the numbers that you're punching in, and you can make that phone call a lot faster next time. As always, we, you can find us online at weather.gov slash Alaska or try mobile.weather.gov. That's an easy way to use our weather forecast on your smartphone or your device. Whether it's Apple or Android or even Amazon, you can simply go to mobile.weather.gov and then once you type in your location, say Koyukuk, save that to your home screen and then come back to that page. It'll load a lot faster. You have links to the forecast information, satellite and radar trends, and local weather observations close to where you are. And it's at a much lower bandwidth use or data rate uh, than what you'll see from our main weather page here. So mobile.weather.gov if you haven't tried that in a while. David.Snyder at NOAA.gov is an easy way to find me. If you can't get that to work, you can't uh, figure out how to make it work on your mobile device, let me know. I'm happy to help you any way I can. Uh, find me on email and I'll, I'll reply just as quickly as I can. Let's take a look at what's going on with our weather. Winds are coming up across Kodiak, across Cook Inlet, Shelikoff Strait, uh, across uh, western Prince William Sound, and across land areas extending northward. Now at this time, we only have wind advisories for the areas shaded in yellow. That would be the Deltana and uh, Tanana Flats region, the eastern Alaska Range, the upper Kuskokwim, and the upper Koyukuk valleys there, but not for south central. Across the marine areas, storm force winds are expected across the region there, and we're going to see some high-end gales across areas in south central too. But no warnings out just yet. So keep in mind that we are going to see wind despite what you see on the map. As we get in through tonight, winds are going to come up across the Cook Inlet region, but we're going to draw in a southeasterly flow across the Turnigan Arm area and the upper hillside. Gusts there, starting especially after midnight, could reach upwards of 60 to 70 miles per hour. As we go through the day, winds are going to come up through Cook Inlet and into the Matanuska Valley. You might see 30 to 40 mile an hour wind gusts in the region, maybe pushing 50 in a few spots. Later in the day, the winds will come out of the Kinnick Valley from the north and east as the weather system passes us by. Across the Deltana and Tanana Flats region, ex uh, expect a healthy southerly flow, especially for the passes west of the Toe Cutoff. For the areas in the upper Koyukuk Valley, we expect to see uh, probably more of a northeasterly flow. Some of those gusts, again, could reach 30 to 40 miles per hour, and we're going to see some healthy wind blowing through the upper Kuskokwim. It'll start out from the south, but then those northeasterly winds will be a little bit more likely through the day. The further north you go, the longer the winds are going to last into your early Thursday morning. Most of us, including south central, will be dealing with wind on Wednesday, and in some cases, this will go into late Wednesday night. So, plan on wind. The other good news, though, about this weather system, besides being uh, something that could bring some healthy amount of wind through the region is that it is going to be fairly quick to pass, but it does have a decent amount of moisture associated with it. So you're saying in South Central, I don't really need the rain again. I had some stuff I want to do outside. Well, sure. This is going to cause uh, some disruptions probably to marine traffic. We're already seeing the uh, Tustamina canceled its uh, trip back and forth from Homer to Kodiak tonight. But uh, it is going to bring some rainfall into parts of southeast, and Ketchikan looks like one of those places that's going to get a healthy amount of rainfall from this. Maybe not a drought-ending round of rainfall, but after coming out of last water season's deficit of about 40 inches or so, any amount of rain is good news when it's coming toward Ketchikan at this point, and it does look like that's going to be possible. You're looking at our maps going, oh, this does not look like the normal thing. Yeah, we had some uh, computer issues today at the Alaska Weather Show, but 
we're getting you the satellite picture here. Notice up north, things are pretty dry here. We've got an area of low pressure sitting just west of Great Slave Lake. The drier conditions here, but there has been some fog across the north slope earlier today, especially close to Utkiavik. Now, as you look out to the west, uh, this swirl of moisture here sitting across the southern bearing is associated with the upper level low pressure system. That's the main driver for this entire weather pattern. And when we get to the aviation maps here in just a few minutes, you'll notice a very large trough sitting across the Bering Sea, driving those southerly winds into south central and the interior. That's grabbing these extra tropical remnants, which is a really fancy way to say leftover typhoons and leftover tropical cyclones from eastern Asia and bringing them in here. And this is one part of the puzzle. What it does not mean is we're not going to get tropical weather. We're not looking at a typhoon or a hurricane moving through the region, but it is going to bring in some wind. All this weather system is is a vacuum and it is going to work its way up across the western end of the Alaska Range and literally pull in or suck in some air across the mountains and through the nooks and crannies of south central Alaska and the interior. Because of that, the winds have the potential of being a little bit stronger than if that storm was just passing us by on the street. As we get through today, uh, you'll notice the clouds again spreading in from southwest. Had a little bit of problem with this map too, but no problem. We're bringing you the weather. High pressure sitting across the Yukon, 1029 millibars. A generally dry and somewhat clearer day across southeast. That will change. Low pressure sitting down toward Kodiak Island at 996 millibars. Rainfall spreading in from the south and west and up the west coast. And then we have several other waves of low pressure across the Bering Sea that are keeping conditions at least marginal to instrument flight rule through most of the afternoon. Areas of drizzle and light rain expected with that. As we get through tonight, the main core of this weather system will shift out of Bristol Bay and into southwest, 988 millibars. The triple point part of this low is one of the more powerful parts of the storm and will bring some periods of moderate to occasionally heavy rain into parts of Prince William Sound. And as that warmer air spreads northward, clouds will spread into southeast. No rain just yet, but as we get into Wednesday and Thursday, especially Ketchikan, you'll start to see that change in your region. A look up north shows that the fog that we were seeing around Utkiavik today and some occasional reports of snow will likely linger through tonight and into tomorrow, especially for Prudhoe Bay and out toward Kaktovik. Out across the west, low pressure sitting under the Bering Sea, still creating some showers there, more clouds and uh, low decks than anything else. Rainfall is expected across southwest as well. Most of the snowfall that you see will be a very narrow band, and most of that at higher terrain. It doesn't look like it's going to be anything really interesting for uh, any parts of west or southwestern Alaska, but if you see a snowflake, that's probably why. As we get into Wednesday, low pressure is still working up through parts of Galena and uh, out across uh, Unalakleet at 986 millibars. You can see that front's made its way over the Alaska Range now, which is no small feat, and still plowing its way toward Northway and Eagle. As this spreads eastward, clouds will lower across northern parts of southeast. The winds are going to pick up as well. Watch for areas of light rain across the central and eastern Gulf and high pressures moving out of the way south of Haida Gwaii allowing a better chance for moisture to start filling in around central and southern parts of southeast. Catch a can, you're going to have to wait about another day to get rainfall after this. Showers will continue across south and western Alaska. The wind will be the main weather story across south central. And again, for passes west of the Toke Cutoff, the Alaska Range, up toward the upper Koyukuk Valley, and again through the upper Kuskokwim Valley. Showers, low clouds, and low decks will continue across the Bering with high pressure sitting across the Chukchi and fog more likely than not across the north slope. As we get into your Thursday, uh, snow showers will be possible across the Brooks Range. Here comes rainfall for central and southern parts of southeast. Showers to light rain expected at this point, but a beneficial moisture at that. Across the northern Gulf, showers continue there. The wind should settle down across many parts of south central and across the north, and a better chance of rainfall will be moving across the west coast all the way through the uh, southwest, Bristol Bay, and out through the Alaska Peninsula as we go, and still hovering around the Aleutians with low clouds and at least MVFR through most of the day. Let's take a quick check of your temperatures there. Across the upper Yukon Valley, temperatures are going to cool off tonight, back into the lower teens, 12 for Fort Yukon and Arctic Village, 17 around Northway. As you get a little bit further inland toward the middle Tanana Valley, 24 degrees there, south central, fairly mild, upper 40s for many locations, southeast, anywhere from the mid 30s around the capital city to the lower 40s as you head down toward Craig and Klawak. For Nome, about 40 degrees southwest, mid to upper 40s there around Bristol Bay, Dutch Harbor and Alaska, 47, up to 52 there tomorrow. 40s and 50s for many in southwest, the north slope hovering near freezing, south central looking at temps in the 50s.
And now, aviation weather around Alaska. On to aviation weather now. IFR conditions are expected to flow into the eastern side of the Kenai Peninsula and western Prince William Sound, as well as areas along the Alaska Range west of Cook Inlet, also across southwestern Alaska along the north-facing slopes of the Brooks Range, and we'll see increasing areas of MVFR across the outer coast of southeast and continuing across a large part of the Bering Sea and in through the Bering Strait. As we go through the afternoon, the concerns through the day will not just be visibility and ceiling, though. It's going to be turbulence, and you'll see that here in just a minute as low pressure is working its way across south central and into the Matanuska Valley. We will see winds coming out of the Matt Valley, but also looking at winds driving up through Cook Inlet and over the Anchorage Bowl and the Aerodrome. So expect some travel issues there with the wind, but also, of course, due to IFR conditions developing across the north and eastern Gulf and gradually nosing their way into southeast. Northern parts of southeast will turn over to MVFR as we go through the afternoon. Look for lingering IFR across some of the northern Alaska and western Alaska range passes. Also hit and miss across the middle Tanana Valley and points northward as you head up toward the Yukon River. MVFR across the Arctic Slope, and then of course uh, across the southwestern regions north of Nunavak Island. MVFR continues to be widespread across the Bering Sea and through Thursday morning. IFR from St. Lawrence Island through Norton Sound, Nome, and up through uh, the Kotzebue Sound region and into Arctic Village. Also hit and miss across some of your northern Brooks Range passes. MVFR for the North Slope. IFR conditions now lingering across the Chugach, northern parts of southeast and around Dixon Entrance, and as we get into the afternoon, MVFR really doesn't change much in the west. Look for lingering IFR across the Talkeetnas into the Chugach Range, and also across some of the higher train of southeast, with MVFR fairly pervasive across north and eastern parts of the Gulf. Here's your pass conditions in detail. Now, Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass at this point look to be pretty good, but we will see some areas of MVFR on the northern side of that. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass we expect to hold at IFR. Rainy Pass looking at IFR most of the day on Wednesday. Same goes for Windy Pass, instrument flight rule there. Isabel Pass holding at IFR through most of your Wednesday. Some improvement possible in Mentasta Pass. Uh, there may be some lingering areas of MVFR, but look for some improvement, at least on the northern side. And uh, Tanita Pass, we expect to see an IFR start with some improvement through the day. Portage Pass, especially the eastern side, looks to be IFR. Turbulence is going to be a pretty big issue through Portage Pass, so despite how the visibility and ceilings look, uh, turbulence will probably be your main factor. And Chilkoot and White Pass looking to be MVFR by the afternoon, and as we saw on Thursday, that'll likely lean over toward an IFR trend. The freezing levels are still pretty high across south central into the eastern Gulf. Levels there anywhere from 8, 10 to almost 12,000 feet the further south you go. But across most of the mainland, levels are below 8,000 feet to about 4,000 feet for uh, parts of Kotzebue Sound and then south of the Brooks Range into the eastern interior where levels there are hovering between about two and 4,000 feet. Uh, icing potential, though, is still pretty high up there. We've got a lot of warm air that's really being shoved further and further north as we go. So levels tomorrow will range around 8,000 feet and above, but notice they're coming down. As we get into the uh, fall months here, it's going to be uh, holding around isolated moderate, maybe considerable moderate in a few of the uh, stronger areas of lift that we'll see on the eastern side of this wave that's coming through Wednesday afternoon. So if you draw a line right about here, if you're going to find any areas that run into more considerable moderate icing potential, probably here across the Alaska Range and parts of South Central, and what you see out west will be a lot more toward the isolated moderate region, but also lower, around 4,000 feet and above. Here's the jet stream. We have a ridge of high pressure across the eastern Gulf, a strong area of low pressure across the Bering with winds there anywhere from 90 to 160 knots coming out of Asia. High pressure up north forcing in a northeasterly flow and on the north side of this trough, easterly is around 50 knots blowing off the mainland. At 9,000 feet, that means a stronger southerly flow. The strongest winds that we'll have tomorrow will be across south central in the Alaska range. Wind speeds there ranging from 40 to 60 knots, but we also have a secondary max across the central and western Aleutians, 50 to 60 knots there coming in from the west. Uh, southeast winds around 20 to 40 knots from the southwest and up north winds coming in from the east about 20 to 30 knots. Now at 3,000 feet, stronger winds continue uh, closer to south central in the Kenai Peninsula, anywhere from 30 to 50, even 55 knots. And across the west, winds a little bit stronger to the south of the chain and easterlies continue around 20 knots up north with a southwest flow light around southeast around 10 knots. Turbulence potential then will likely reach the considerable moderate stage. 
maybe even some isolated severe across south central tomorrow. Most of this below four to 10,000 feet. There will be some areas of strong turbulence expected in the region tomorrow. Hello, I'm a Gozar series weather satellite orbiting 22,000 miles above Earth. I can see a lot of cool stuff from up here, and I take pictures of it with my spiffy camera that has 16 different settings. I have such good eyesight, I can see clouds, snow, smoke, smog, and ash. So I can warn you about dangerous conditions and help you avoid them. When storms are brewing, I watch them closely and help with hurricane, tornado, and flood warnings to help keep you safe. And my lightning mapper tracks lightning strikes way up in the sky, even through dark, dense clouds. I also help with search and rescue missions. I listen for distress signals from emergency beacons and tell search and rescue teams just where to find people who need help. But even when I'm keeping a close eye on Earth, I'm monitoring weather out here in space, too! I watch the sun for big bursts of energy, which send waves of radiation toward Earth that can affect power grids, block communication with planes, cause errors in GPS, and damage satellites. Space weather is also very dangerous for astronauts working outside the International Space Station. I warn them so they can get inside where they'll be safe. So the next time you watch a weather report or check your phone for the forecast, remember, that's me. So look to the sky and wave. I'll be here. Things are looking pretty bad down there. But don't worry, I'm going to give weather forecasters a heads up and help you stay safe. I'm a Gozar series weather satellite, and one of my jobs is to keep an eye on Earth's weather as I orbit above. But I'm 22,000 miles above Earth. How does your local weather forecaster know what I see all the way up here? First, I have to figure out what's going on. I point my special camera at the Earth and take pictures of the clouds I see below. My pictures show where the clouds are, but I also take lots of other notes about the clouds. For example, how high they reach into the atmosphere, how much rain they might cause, and when a severe storm may be forming. But I can't keep all of this information to myself. I have to share it with weather forecasters down on Earth. A big antenna is waiting for my call. Since I'm a satellite, I send my pictures and notes in a computer language of ones and zeros. Luckily, the antenna speaks my language. Computers connected to the antenna organize my notes and combine all of the pictures and cloud information and translate them into weather maps. They send a version of the maps back up to me. I'll hold on to these for later. Another copy of the maps is split into smaller pieces. This helps the maps move faster from one place to another. The map pieces are then sent for processing before being sent back up in the sky to a communication satellite. From there, the maps are picked up by antennas at the National Weather Service forecast offices in each region. There are more than 100 offices. I also take the maps that I received and send them out to companies that specialize in making the maps more colorful and better for viewing on TVs and computers. The colorful maps and the maps from the forecast offices then go to your local weather forecaster. The forecaster combines the information from these maps with lots of other information, like model forecast data and radar data, to make predictions about the upcoming weather in your area. And that's how I help you find out if bad weather is going to ruin your afternoon plans. 
You're welcome. Soon it will be my time to shine. In outer space. I'm the GOES-R satellite. That stands for Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite. And the R stands for my order in this series of weather satellites. Like my older siblings before me, I'll do a lot for watching weather, but I'm pretty special because I have a lot of new gadgets. I'm originally from Colorado, but my journey to space has a few stops along the way. I'll be shipped in a very special satellite shipping container to Kennedy Space Center. Moving me around is not easy. I'm over 18 feet wide and weigh 6,000 pounds. And then things get really exciting. I get loaded onto an Atlas V-541 launch vehicle. A big rocket! Woo! After Atlas and I blast off together, my compartment separates from the launch vehicle and I continue to climb higher and higher. Then I break away completely and unfurl my solar panel and antenna. <sighs> After that, I have to use my thrusters to get into just the right position, 22,000 miles above the ground and traveling 1.9 miles per second to keep up with Earth's rotation. And then I can officially start my job along with my fellow GOES sisters, where I take advanced pictures for more accurate weather forecasts, map lightning in real time, and improve the monitoring of the sun's activity. It's going to be so awesome! I can't wait! And now, marine weather around Alaska. And back with your marine weather now. Starting off with the sea ice edge, we're seeing some uh, new growth across the uh, Beaufort Sea coast, all the way from Utkiavik and Admiralty Bay eastward toward Kaktovik and Demarcation Point. A lot of what you're seeing up north is old ice at this point, ice that made it through the summer. And we're starting to see some newer ice grow uh, well north of the North Slope coastline. For the very latest information, anytime, head to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice. Read the outlook for the rest of the season and check out the new maps. This, of course, is concentration where the white area is showing concentration above 80%, blue below 80% to about 20%. But the other side of this is the sea ice stage that tells you how old that ice is and how thick it is. So very important information there and you can find that on our website anytime. Let's take a look at southeast. You're going to start to get some windy conditions there as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. A stronger southeasterly flow will be moving up through the inside passage. Looking for gusts upwards of 35 knots as we get into the Lynn Canal and Stevens Passage. The sustained winds only 15 to 20. Across the outer coast anywhere from 15 to 30 knots. Seas there ranging from 7 to 11 feet. And as we get into Thursday, a better chance for rainfall across southern parts of southeast, including Ketchikan, but also for a, a little bit more of a northerly flow out of the Lynn Canal. A variable winds across central and southern parts of the Inside Passage, but winds are coming up anywhere from 15 to 25 knots across the outer coast from the west and northwest, and looking for seas anywhere from 10 to 11 feet on Thursday. For south central, notice scales moving in across the region, across the north and western gulf, 45 knots for the region, 18 to 21 foot seas expected. Southeasterly is also picking up in a big way for the Prince William Sound area, 40 to 45 knots inside to outside, 9 foot seas on the inside, 18 foot seas on the outside. And coming up Cook Inlet, a healthy southerly wind working all the way up to about 40 knots across the northern inlet across areas uh, south of Clam Gulch all the way into the Barren Islands, 40 to 45 knots with 12 to 14 foot seas. As we get into Thursday, much improved weather. South and westerlies coming across the northern Gulf, 15 to 20. Southerlies return to light service across Prince William Sound, two foot seas expected there and much improved weather. Cook Inlet also settling down, four to five foot seas expected on a 20 knot wind. Southeasterlies though still 
coming across the northern inlet. For southwest, look for storm force winds through Shelikoff Strait and east of Kodiak Island. 50 knots there, 18 to 26 foot seas. Once again, we've heard that the Tustamina is not sailing tonight between Homer and Kodiak. Uh, look for west and southwesterlies coming across the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay, looking for 10 to 14 foot seas there, and 22 foot seas approaching the southern end of Kodiak Island around Akiak, 45 knots there. Improved weather as we get into Thursday, southerlies across the Bering Sea, 25 to 30 knots across the North Pacific and Shelikoff Strait, 7 foot seas and improving there, 13 foot seas east of Kodiak and Akiak, and 13 to 15 foot seas as you head down the Pacific coast of the Alaska Peninsula around Sandpoint, looking for about 30 knots there from the south and west. For the Aleutians, the strongest winds will be mainly to your east. You'll notice a west and southwesterly flow working through the region and still dealing with some of the leftovers here between Nikolsky and Unalaska. 30 to 35 knots, looking for about 14 to 17 foot seas as you go through Wednesday, and west and southwesterlies across the western chain, anywhere from 9 to 10 foot seas between Kiska and Adak. As we get into Thursday, uh, winds are still fairly tame considering what's just been through. West and northwesterly winds pull in. Uh, you're looking at about 20 to 25 knots, 8 to 9 foot seas across the southern Bering Sea coast. For the Pacific, slightly higher seas around 11 to 12 foot, uh, looking for about 20 to 25 knots there, and up to 30 knots from Kiska to Shimya, anywhere from uh, the northwest, about 30 knots with a 13 foot sea. For the west coast, north and easterly winds working out of Norton Sound, 20 to 25 knots, 5 to 6 foot seas there. You're going to see more of a west and southwesterly flow, though, closer to St. Paul and St. George, as well as the Kuskokwim Delta. Seas could be as high as 13 feet around St. Paul and St. George on Wednesday. Getting into Thursday, 10-knot winds with 7-foot seas around the Pribilovs. That's improving weather there. A south and westerly onshore flow from Hooper Bay into the Kuskokwim Delta, including areas around um, the rivers, especially east of Nunavak Island. As you get out towards St. Lawrence Island and St. Matthew Island, the winds come around to the north and northeast, uh, looking for 7- uh, and 9-foot seas there. For the North Slope Abroad, easterly flow for the Beaufort Sea Coast, much stronger for the Chukchi, 25-30 to 30 knots with 8-11-foot to 11 foot seas expected. For Thursday, a broad easterly flow continues 25 to 30 knots, expecting 9-foot seas for most of the Beaufort and 9 to 12-foot seas for the Chukchi. Let's recap your weather. Wind is an issue for south central and into the interior tonight as the weather system makes its way northward. Plan on wind advisory for some of the higher terrain and gusty conditions across south central. Thanks for watching. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.